Last week, I had trouble moving the tractor with the backhoe, so I cranked up my hydraulic pressure, and we're going to see how it affects that. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to replicate a test I did last week based on trying to walk the tractor by using the boom on the backhoe. A lot of people prefer walking their tractor with the backhoe as opposed to getting it off and moving the tractor. And I think there are a lot of pros and cons that I talked about last time. It's less stress on the machine to take the extra time to get off and move it. But it can be a time saver to force it to move with the backhoe. So in that video, I explained that most setups should be able to do this, but mine can't. And well, it, it can, but it really struggles to. And a big part of that is that I've added a tremendous amount of additional weight to my tractor. And people were just totally discounting that in the comments, as if it doesn't matter that taking a machine that weighs 3,000 pounds and adding 2,000 pounds to it shouldn't affect the fact that the backhoe can move it or not. It's a very real difference. That's kind of like saying, yes, I can walk up a flight of stairs. You say, what if I put an extra 250 pounds on your shoulder? Yeah, you might still be able to do it, but you're going to strain and struggle. And that's the exact situation with the backhoe. So last week, before I left for the National Farm Machinery Show, I increased my hydraulic pressure from 2,800 pounds to 3,050, which is the maximum rating from John Deere in the owner's manual. And it's also the rating of a lot of components within a tractor hydraulic system. So we're gonna find out today if making no other change except for that hydraulic increase will allow me to lift my very small but very heavy tractor. As this sits right now, it probably weighs 5,500 pounds. As I back it up so that you can get the whole tractor in, I just said 5,500 pounds and people are going to balk at that, but I've literally taken it to the scale in different configurations and I know what it weighs. The other thing people were highly critical of was just saying I didn't understand the technique. Trust me, I understand the technique. I've tried it in a lot of different ways. I'll be trying to move it at full throttle, so don't bother mentioning that. So first thing I'm going to do is see if I can lift it up and move the tractor side to side. And the biggest calling for this is if you want to set it over a trench to continue digging the trench. And let's find out how well it does that. Now, if you run equipment for a living, you would still think my technique's really clunky, but I tested each way to do it. Just pushing down with the boom won't pick the tractor up. Curling the bucket in, pushing down with the boom, and then uncurling the bucket will lift it up and allow me to move it side to side. A lot of people suggested use the outriggers to lift the machine, then put the boom down, raise the outriggers, and then I can pivot. I don't like the idea of setting the machine down on the boom in a position that the boom can't lift the machine. That's how I think you damage it. If it can't lift it, then it probably shouldn't support it. Now you guys saw that I was able to pick it up and move it side to side, but would you be comfortable using that to set this across the trench? You could do it, but it's, it's pretty tight. Now let's try the part that I really struggled with and I'm hoping I fixed, which is rolling the tractor forward so you can continue your trench. It only works within a certain range of motion. You can't do it all the way back here and you can't do it fully extended. You got to be at about three quarters extension and you're going to use the pushing force of the bucket again more than the pushing force of the boom or the stick. It turns out that trying to use the curl function to push the tractor didn't work all it's doing is stripping off grass and leaving a mud spot 
So what I had to do instead is dig the teeth of the bucket into the ground and then use that as a point to push off of. So I just moved the tractor about 50 feet using the exact same technique that I tried the other day. And the other day I tried it a few times, it moved a foot or so, and I said this is a waste of time. Now today with no other change except for a little bit more hydraulic pressure, whenever I would go to push, I'm, I'm kind of pushing down, I'm pushing out, and I'm you know, extending the, the bucket just a little bit. And every time I did that, it would move a few feet. But there was a point as I was starting to push down where I go, it doesn't feel like it's gonna go, and then it would kind of push through. And so it had just enough power to move the machine. But right there, that felt efficient enough to actually do it. So hydraulic pressure, that 250 pounds of hydraulic pressure that I'm allowed to increase and stay within the recommendations of the manufacturer, is enough to matter on this backhoe. And that's all I wanted to determine today. If you guys see my hat here, you can surmise that I'm getting ready to do a bunch of other hydraulic upgrades on the tractor. And I'm gonna do a lot more test of its capabilities. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, stick around and over the next couple weeks I should have some cool stuff coming. But I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.